Hello everyone, this is Bradley. Today this is a fundamental tutorial talking about uh, data time in simulation zone. Why it is important, when should you use that, or why is that not important? So let's start. So here we are in Blender, and this is a pretty simple setup in geometry nodes that uh, I have a procedural cube and I'm using a set position to set position. Right now I didn't input any parameters into the node so this cube is just generated at a water origin. And if I play around with this offset, you can see I'm moving this cube. If I just set that to one meter, then it sits on this one meter marker. But if I play this animation, it's not really moving. So we are setting the destination of our cube using this set position node. And in order to animate that, I need to animate these offsets over time. There are several ways to do. One is that you just set keyframe, or there's a same time node, which is reading the time on your timeline. So at frame one, we have frame number one, and the second maybe 0 0.03 and so on and so forth. And here I'm just going to use that uh, to drive this combine XYZ and plug that into the offset. So by playing this animation, you can see this cube is moving to the right, it's too fast, so we're using the second, then it moves a little bit slower. Okay, so this is the traditional way we animate in geometry nodes. If you are working with a simulation zone, then this setup will be very different. So let's add a simulation zone. I'm going to use the same cube and the same set position and output this simulation output. The principle of a simulation zone is that uh, you run through this simulation and you output this simulation output back to this simulation input and you run this loop again. So this is basically a loop over time. This also means that uh, we basically add a new set of position to our node tree every time when we are playing this animation. So. It changes the nature of this parameter. Instead of setting the destination using this set position offset, we are actually moving our cube using a velocity of this offset. So now if I play this animation, you can see this cube is already moving. I don't even need to keyframe anything or put a same time. It's already moving relative to time. Here you may realize that uh, basically we are moving one meter per frame because every frame we are calculating this simulation zone. So we are adding one meter into this offset per frame, which is the speed of this movement. And it's quite fast so that you have to really zoom out in order to visualize this effect. And uh, you want to slow it down. Obviously, it's not very convenient that you have to type a small enough value every time into this offset. But uh, at some point, you have to, okay? But uh, what's more problematic is uh, that uh, your video may be one minute, one minute long, but not everyone is having the same frame rate. So it may be 24 frames per second, it may be 29 frames per second, or sometimes it's even worse that uh, people start to have 60 frames per second or 120 frames per second, and so on and so forth. And then this one meter per frame speed of movement is not really applicable for our animation, because if you change the frame rate, then your animation can look drastically different because the parameter is completely being changed. And in order to solve these kinds of problem, we need to transform this one meter per frame into something like a one meter per second speed of movement. And that's why we start to get this data time, which is basically giving you one meter per second velocity so that if you plug that into the offset 
you will see this movement becomes much slower and more uh, suitable for your project. What's more important uh, is that uh, no matter how you actually change your frame rate, the overall time and the movement will still be consistent regardless. Another benefit of using this data time to construct this uh, one meter per second velocity in your simulation zone is that you can further modify this value into something uh, physically accurate. For example, we can have this negative 10 meter per second. And you may find this value a little bit uh, familiar because there is a very famous constant, which is a negative 10 meter per second square. This is an approximation of a gravity constant on the Earth. Uh, the actual value is like uh, 9.806, whatever stuff, but uh, we are not going that far. It's also listed in this uh, same panel gravity and you have that, okay? So we can transform this one meter per second into this uh, value of gravity. You do find that uh, the units are not the same because this is uh, velocity, this is acceleration. So how can we convert them to each other? So this is a very basic formula that's velocity equals uh, acceleration times T. So we basically need a time component into this data time in addition to multiply uh, to negative 10. So here we basically just uh, multiply it twice. Uh, we multiply this data time with the products between these the same time seconds and uh, negative 10. And then we plug that into the z-axis. And looking at this z-axis, we will see that the cube was slow at the beginning, but it becomes faster and faster dropping to the ground. So this is kind of a approximation to gravity constant. Of course, you can be, make it more accurate, but that's not what we are going to discuss today. Okay. So basically, this is kind of usage of data time. However, there are several issues using this data time. Uh, for now, you may realize that this data time is only available at the beginning of this simulation zone input. Imagine you have a very huge node tree in your simulation zone. It does not look really nice that you have to zoom out and pull a link to your parameter. And imagine if you have multiple parameters then you have multiple very huge long links, which makes it very annoying. Uh, so there is another way I've seen people do, is that they store name the attribute for this data time. And you can name whatever you want. Sometimes I just named this as T. So I take the name the attribute, get an T and use it. I can use in any places in the node tree. But I personally don't like this workflow in general because sometimes I see there is an attribute T, I don't know where it's stored. Or sometimes I see a store named attribute, I don't know where it is actually being used. Of course, you can make that very specific, saying that this is a data time, and this is a data time, but um, I just don't like it. What's more important is whatever we are doing here is actually not at all necessary. The essence of this data time is essentially just the inverse of our frame rate. This is suggested by the menu. And uh, you may say that uh, Blender does not really provide this uh, frame rate in geometry nodes. As a note, but actually you can calculate it. It's very simple, you just divide the current seconds with the current frame. 
and then you will have a result of 0 0.033335 and you have a data time which is also 0 0.033335 and if you change the frame rate you will see the same results and you can even compare these two results together with uh, two simulation zone. So I take another duplicate of simulation zone and I'm using a combined XYZ with the data time. I join geometry and I take a transform so that they can sit side by side. So now if I reset everything, and then by playing this animation, you can see they are basically moving at the same rate forever. This is the same when you are working with uh, gravity and so on. But basically, you can use a very simple formula to replace this data time. You can <coughs> make that into a node group. And then let's just call it data time. At the end, I want to discuss something which is not really important, but it, it may be interesting to know. Uh, within this tutorial, I already discussed several ways to offset this cube. Uh, the one with simulation and the one without simulation. So we can use either the data time to within the simulation. But uh, the one without the simulation, we basically just use this uh, time seconds to drive it. They should actually have identical result. As you play this animation, uh, let's plug that into the z-axis. As you play this animation, then you can see uh, they are basically running at the same speed because this is, is just the two ways to approach the same problem. However, uh, this happens only because your frame rate is the same as the ideal one. What if you start to have a frame dropping? So in extreme case, if I just jump at the timeline, then you realize that uh, my animation without the simulation is already moving because it's reading the time on the timeline. But the simulation zone does not really move. For simulation zone, you really have to play the animation without any frame drop. This also means that what if I have a frame drop in the frame rate? So. Uh, we know that this playback on a timeline contains several modes. Play every frame is the default in Blender, but some people do not want to wait a lot of time per frame, so they start to choose the frame dropping, or for me working a lot with audio, I sync to audio, or there can be many different options. But if you do not play every frame, it means you must have frame dropping in both modes. So let's just choose a frame dropping and we're going to uh, create a frame drop environment. So let's take a cube and I'm going to subdivide that to 255 and I just transform it so that I do not see it and join. So in the viewport, we still only have two cubes. And if I play this animation, we have a frame drop and you realize that they actually run at a different rate or velocity. This is because the clock used by simulation zone is not the same as the absolute time on the timeline. This is not uh, really important because at the end of the day, it's very likely that you are going to bake this animation then they will be synchronized. Or if you render this animation, then they will likely be synchronized as well. But uh, it gives you a very important hint that uh, the simulation clock can be very different to the absolute time unless you tick this play every frame, then they becomes identical because you really tick the clock every frame for simulation zone. But the downside of a play every frame is that the frame drop will actually affect the fluency of your viewport. 
So in this case, we are still half of the frame rate, but here if it becomes more extreme, then you basically cannot really preview anything in your viewport because you have to really play every frame without the frame dropping. So uh, on the other hand, what's actually important is that previously when we construct a gravity, I mentioned that we use this data time to multiply with negative 10 times this same time for the effect. But actually this is not so correct because this same time clock may not be synchronized with the one for this simulation zone. So simulation zone has its different has its own clock where same time is always using an absolute time. So to better solve that, it's more possible that you want to actually add the data time together and uh, apply it uh, for the effect. So this is not a data time, this is a current time. So that you have a real accurate whatever stuff. But as I mentioned before, this is not really important because if you bake the animation or if you play every frame, then the clock will be identical to the real time. So up to you, whatever you do, I don't really care. Or sometimes you can just make that into a preset. Uh, you can definitely construct a own simulation zone to just uh, play with the tick clock thing. Then data, you have a current time with a simulation clock. So you can replace such kind of weird function without constructing it inside simulation zone and yes but anyway it's not really important I just want to talk about a certain kind of interesting thing and the potential implication of it so I hope you enjoy this video I'll probably see you next time bye bye